On this episode of Carnage, we're going to look at doing some plumbing. Now that we've uh, handled most of the wiring, actually not most, but some of the wiring, a bit of the wiring, we've wired the coils and some other stuff. But anyway, we've done some wiring. It is time to look into some plumbing and uh, we're gonna use one of these billet surge tanks like we have used in the Lexan. This one's gonna mount up under the tray floor. It's gonna have three Hellcat pumps in it. So we're gonna get it mounted up and start hooking it up and then plumb up our fuel system, uh, look at oil feeds for the turbos, drains, all that sort of stuff. So, yep, this episode's all about the plumbing. Just the same with real estate, it's all about location, 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 and we need a location that's gonna be, well, close to the fuel tank, and, well, it's not a million miles away from the battery. Some people will be unhappy with the battery being right close to the fuel system, but it'll be fine. And um, yeah, we can mount it there. It's not gonna interfere with the floor at all. Plenty of room to run our hoses. So yeah, just gotta work out where the prime position is for it. We can't mount it up here because it's too high. It has to be down here somewhere. Uh, might have to flatten that floor a little bit. Break out the hammer. Yeah, it's not really heavy enough. And I can't get it with my left. Oh, now we're getting serious. See how that goes. Maybe I'll go that way. that. So as I mentioned for this build we are using three Hellcat pumps. They're probably going to be staged. So what we're going to do is set up, because there's only four fittings, so basically fittings for two. We're going to double up two of the pumps on one side one of the pumps on the other. So one of the pumps will be running full time and then two pumps will be staged to come in at a later time. So that is the plan. Hassan Chop! Had to do it. Everyone was asking for it. Right, well that's one pump done. 
Other two pumps will be just the same, so we'll get that done off camera. Move on to the next thing. So next up, we've got the fuel rails for our billet intake. So just test fit some of these injectors for the moment. Make sure they work with our rail and our manifold and all that. So like a little lube on there. So the injectors are up over 2,000 cc's, so plenty of fuel for what we want. Hopefully they will do the job. I'm sure they will, but you know. We seem to run out of injector a lot. This time we've kind of preempted, but yeah, we'll see how we go. Feels nice and solid. Might do a little quick injector plug in. What have we got? Seven, five, three, and one. Okay. Should be right, and then we'll put our coils up like that, and they'll all run together nice and neat. Awesome. Right, well let's talk fuel systems. On the Lexum what we did was we went a dash eight feed up to this rail and across and then fed this rail off that rail and then back to the regulator and back to the tank. We could do something similar with this but this car is gonna make a lot more horsepower. You know, maybe double what that car makes. So we're gonna treat the fuel system a little bit differently. So we're gonna go dash 10 off the surge tank with its three pumps, boom, up here, split off into a Y, and then dash eight feeds for either side rail. So dash 10, feeding two rails, and then both these rails will then return to the reg, which we'll probably have to mount up here somewhere. I'll find space. I've gotta still work out what's up here at the front of the engine. And then the return will probably be dash eight to the surge pot because it only has a dash eight size hole on the surge pot for the return anyway. So that should do the trick, we hope. But yeah, because it's race car, we've got to treat it a little bit differently and give it full flow to the rails. Those injectors need every ounce of fuel they can get because uh, yeah, this thing is going to make some horsepower. So anyway, um, I need to work out some of the architecture at the front here. You know, we've got an electric water pump, we've got an alternator. All I don't have is a power steering pump. 
I need to work that out so we can then work out its position so then we can work out where we need to have our regulator. Some figuring out to do. So I have consulted the catalogue, the internet and the tablets brought on down from the mountains and yeah, we've got a power steering pump on order. Still kinda haven't sorted out all the pulleys on the front yet because the electric water pump is changing a lot of that stuff. Normally, you know, there's belt wrap around the water pump, all that sort of stuff. So I have ideas, we'll see if they work. More on that later. But we have some stuff here that has arrived and um, including this very, Neat little uh, trans cooler and fan from ProFlow. So we're going to mount that up the back somewhere where I'm, when I get this car back up on the hoist. But yeah, it's got a little sensor there for turning it on. Comes with a bit of a loom as well, make uh, the installation that much easier. I love it when, when they give you bits like that to plug into your plug and not just give you a plug and then you've got to go find the other half of that plug and then make up a wiring loom and all that sort of stuff. At least they get you started with that. So, trans cooler, like I said, we'll go up the back somewhere with that. So run the trans cooler lines backwards up to the back, like we did on the Mazda years ago, if you uh, saw that. And then we've got a new throttle body here. Now we did have a throttle body before, a uh, drive-by wire one, but it's a discontinued model and um, VPW and ProFlow rang us the other day and said, how about you use this one instead? This is one of our current production models, 102 millimeter, and that will go on the front there. So I might bolt that up now just so we know what we need to get around in terms of lines and fittings and stuff like that. So we'll bolt that on and then we'll start running some lines and fittings. How's that sound? Right, so uh, that should go like that. Let's see how we go. Okay, I think that is right. Yeah, should be good, all right. Well, that tells us we need to uh, think about our lines, where they need to go. All right, well, let's start looking at our surge pot and our filter and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so we located our surge pot earlier. Um, now I've put the filter in there and obviously I'm gonna have to run a line from there to there. So this will be the feed line, dash 10. This Teflon stuff, we're gonna use Teflon like we did on the Lexan and uh, dash 10. So the only issue with Teflon, Teflon's awesome, except it doesn't have a very tight bend radius. So with the dash 10 stuff, I think the bend radius is 170 mil. So you've got to keep your bends gradual. So it means you can't just go leaning on it because if you kink it, you ruin it. So yeah. But yeah, I will work out our length here. Just take this fitting off here. Take this one off here. Give that a bit of a trim. All right, so that's cut. So that will go down to there. About there. So you just gotta make sure you got enough between the seats of each fitting. So the seat there and the seat there. 
we have a little bit of wiggle room but yeah not much all right let's put some fittings on this fan out our little stainless bits <laughs> get our little olive or a feral whatever you want to call them all right bit of silicon spray have it one fitting now for the other end all right I think that is right so there we have it two fittings all right, so that goes like that, and that will go like that. Let's give it a test run, make sure it's all good. Okay. Okay. Look at that. Perfect. Hmm, now the other end. Okay, so we've got some dash 10 line here. Okay, so if we go, that's within our bend radius. Let's just double check our tape measure. Yeah. Yep, that's within 170. Alrighty, well let's put that hose end on and then we'll work out where the other end's at. Okay, well, that's starting to look pretty good. Uh, we need to work out where we're going through the floor pan. I think I have that location, but because we're going to do this, well, it needs to go back up on the hoist. We have handled most of the stuff in terms of the wiring stuff that meant it had to come off the hoist in the first place. Uh, I have wired up the drive-by-wire pedal. I have wired up the dash, um, as in blinkers and all that sort of stuff. All that wiring's been done off camera. So now that I don't have to climb in and out of the cabin so much, I think, yep, it's a good time to get it back on the hoist, sort out the plumbing stuff, and yeah, get that nailed down. Alrighty, well, let's make that happen. So I don't actually have my bulkhead fitting at the moment. We should have it tomorrow, hopefully. But I think we need to come through the floor right there and then 90 degrees up along the rail all the way, keep it away from the exhaust, which exhaust looks amazing, but yeah, we don't want the uh, fuel line running beside it. And then probably do a right turn up through there and get into the engine bay somehow up here somewhere as long as that doesn't interfere with the wheels no 
We've got plenty of clearance, so lots of room there. I guess the exhaust was a good guide there anyway. So yeah, come inside there and then get our fuel into the engine bay there somewhere and then find a home for our reg because obviously the dash 10 feeding up to the rails is one line, but then we need a dash eight returning back to the surge pot as well. So it'll probably share the same path and we'll just have them side by side. But yeah, I think that's the way we're gonna have to do it. But we are short a few fittings. So this sounds like a job for tomorrow, man. So I have ordered a whole bunch more fittings and that sort of thing, but uh, we got our order in too late yesterday, Arbo and Mr. Courier. That's all right, they'll be here in the next day or two. That's on me. In the meantime though, I've been making up a whole bunch of uh, CAD designs. So designing these in CAD and then going over and seeing the boys at MPW and cutting them out. So that's pretty cool. We're gonna mount the regulator there. So the lines will come from the rails back under the manifold to the reg and then back to the back of the car. We've got a mount here for our sensor block as well. So that'll mount to the plate and the plate's gonna mount where the old map sensor mounted. So pretty cool. I've got to say I am getting addicted to CAD. It is the greatest thing ever. And uh, I'd love to get my own plasma table, but in the meantime, I'll just keep borrowing the one at MPW. Thanks boys. But yeah, so we're getting all that done. Obviously you've seen us do a whole bunch of lines and fittings, so you don't need us to see, need to see us getting all those lines and fittings. We're still waiting on our, our power steering pump as well. I've been doing you know bits and pieces off camera and even after hours on the wiring, just finishing that up as well. So lots has been happening. But one thing I do want to mention before we go is um, my mate Benny, Benny Hewlett, you've seen him on the channel before. He's in the States at the moment with Redman. I don't know if you guys know Redman. He's a crazy character that's uh, one of Street Machine's uh, serial letter writers and a funny guy. So those guys on a bit of a Harley tour across America at the moment, raising money for the Black Dog Institute. So I'm gonna put a link in the description. So if you feel like it, you can uh, donate some money to the cause. They are well over halfway to their target, but uh, if you can throw them a couple bucks, I know the boys would appreciate it. And obviously the money isn't going to their US holiday, the money is going to the Black Dog Institute. They're paying for the tour out of their own pockets. So anyway, throw the boys a couple bucks, raise some money for men's mental health and uh, do a good deed for the day. But yeah, we're gonna keep plugging away at the ute, get that plumbing done, get that wiring done, and you're gonna see it all on future episodes of Carnage.